Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and you've probably heard that Amazon is starting to subsidize the cost of some smartphones on their website for their Prime customers, and they uh, let us borrow one of those phones today. This is the Blue R1 HD, and this one is available for as little as 50 bucks. We're looking at the $60 version right now, and uh, for that lower price, what you get are ads baked into the operating system here. Nothing too intrusive, but on your lock screen here, you'll see an ad that will take you conveniently to an Amazon uh, app to purchase that uh, particular book in this case or some other thing and uh, when you have notifications on your screen you'll see a smaller ad here at the bottom they have a couple other little things also like ads kind of baked into uh, the uh, home screen navigation here and whatnot also but really nothing all that intrusive in fact you get all your Amazon apps pre-installed with a single sign-on but they also keep all the Google stuff running too, which we'll explore in a few minutes here. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that Amazon is letting us borrow this phone for a couple days for the purposes of this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the phone here and see what we got. So this is a kind of a lower end phone. So you're going to uh, pay 50 bucks to get a gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. This one costs $59 because it has two gigs of RAM and 16 gigabytes gigabytes of storage. There's also an SD card slot on the back, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so I would recommend spending the extra $10 and getting this one because I think two gigabytes at this point uh, is probably the minimum that I would recommend for Android devices these days. Now, if you don't want the ads and the other Amazon stuff uh, on it when you get it, uh, you can pay $100 for that uh, one gigabyte phone or $109 for this particular phone. So if you uh, don't like the ads, pay a little bit more and you won't have any ads. But if you uh, don't mind them, then you get a pretty good phone for a pretty Pretty good price. And that's what's been surprising about this phone is that it doesn't feel like one of these cheap phones that you get for 50 bucks. It does have a really solid industrial design. The screen is really nice actually. It's a 720p display, a 5 inch IPS, but really decent viewing angles. Very bright actually. And in fact, it's really sharp and it almost looks like a 1080p display. When I first took it out of the box and turned it on, I was surprised by how nice the screen looked. And the phone overall feels very sturdy. So it has Gorilla Glass on the front here. It has some of that uh, curved effect you might have seen on the iPhone a little bit as well. It's got a good feel to it. It's not all metal though, but it doesn't feel uh, flimsy either. So really solid feeling phone, a nice rubberized backing here for a good grip on everything. And I was quite pleased with uh, how everything felt in the hand here when I started uh, playing with the phone on it. Uh, there isn't much to talk about with the phone really though. It's kind of a lower end processor, a MediaTek MT6735. It's got a quad core uh, Cortex A53 processor at 1.3 gigahertz, a Mali T720 GPU for games and whatnot. You'll see that it is all that much powerful for games, but it can play a few of the uh, more popular casual games without uh, too much difficulty on there. It's got an 8 megapixel camera here on the back, so you can take passable photos and video. It goes up to 1080p at uh, 30 frames per second. You can see some samples I'm running here as I'm talking about it. Uh, not bad, but uh, really not going to be all that great. This is not a flagship phone, so you're not going to get a flagship camera, but it's passable. Uh, there's a 5 megapixel camera on the front for selfies that will also record video at 720p, I believe. Leave. So nothing spectacular, but uh, good enough to get the job done when you want to take a quick picture or something like that. Uh, there are two SIM card slots on here, and it's important to note that this does not support uh, the um, Verizon or Sprint networks here in the United States. So this is an unlocked phone. It will work on uh, any carrier that supports it, but Sprint and Verizon are not part of that. T-Mobile and AT&T do work with it. You can buy a SIM card for each and switch back and forth between them. Uh, they do note, though, that uh, T-Mobile's uh, new 4G extended range service does not work on here, uh, but it does support LTE uh, on both of those carriers and other carriers that it's compatible with. You can check out the full list of frequencies it supports uh, on the Amazon page that I'll link to in the video description. And there's also a micro SD card slot here. So if you want to add some additional storage, you can do so. You can add up to a 64 gigabyte card in there. So there is some ways to expand this, especially if you want to store media and some other stuff off of the main storage, you can uh, get that done on there. But again, overall, it really feels like a, a pretty sturdy phone and something that might actually last a little while, which is why I definitely recommend going for the more expensive version of it because you will get, I think, a lot more use out of this phone than you might normally get out of something that costs only 50 bucks. They've really put together a really solidly constructed device here. Now, I was very surprised that they left all the Google stuff intact on here. So uh, in addition to having all of Amazon's app stores and other related applications already baked in and ready to go for you, you also have the Google Play Store on here too. So all of your Google apps that you've purchased or are planning to purchase will all be available to you. Uh, and you will also have the Amazon Underground uh, free app store here available for you as well. So there are apps that Amazon sells directly. Uh, they also have a lot of free stuff for Prime members too. So when you load up the uh, Amazon 
Amazon app here, you go to underground apps, and there's a bunch of good stuff here that uh, is completely free if you're an Amazon Prime member to play, including things that might cost you money on the Google Store. Uh, and normally this requires some additional installation. You gotta turn on allow installation of apps from unknown sources and everything else on a typical Android phone. On this one, you don't. So you just get everything hooked up, uh, turn it on, and you log into your Google account first, and then it brings up the information that it needs to get you into your Amazon account. And now you've got both app stores working side by side here in harmony on one of these uh, Amazon subsidized phones. So I thought that was, uh, was a really nice thing there. And most apps run very well on here, including a lot of games as well. So let's take a look at some of its app performance. Now I do have a notification up now, so you can see the size of the ad that will appear when you do have notifications on your lock screen. It'll give you a smaller ad uh, when there are notifications coming into your phone. I'm gonna go back to my list of apps that are running currently. I have Goat Simulator that I downloaded from that free uh, Amazon store here. We'll resume my game and you can see uh, how well this performs. Maybe I'll pan my camera around here a little bit. Uh, so not bad actually. In fact, it runs pretty nicely for a, a game with a lot of 3D graphics uh, involved with it and it seems to be working pretty well. Well enough, I think, for uh, any kid or you in your life who wants to play a few casual games and doesn't want to spend a lot of money to do it. So things like Minecraft and other uh, casual games, I think, will run just fine on here. There are phones that will run these games faster with better graphical detail, but uh, this is, I think, good enough for a lot of folks and for the price, you really can't go wrong with it. Let's take a look now at my YouTube channel and I uh, will pull up some videos here. So let me just go out of here. We'll pull up a, a video fresh from my list here. Maybe we'll pick this one and we'll see how well this plays back here. So you can see the video spin up right away. Uh, no lag or anything with playback, smooth frame rates. This does not have wireless AC built in, which is the faster wireless standard. It's 2.4 gigahertz wireless N, but uh, for this phone and its performance level, it's fine for uh, what most people are going to do with it. And again, for 50 bucks, uh, there will be some compromises made in different places, but uh, really decent performance, especially for the kinds of apps that most consumers run. And we also ran the 3D Mark Ice Storm Benchmark. And I'm not big on benchmarks usually, but it's good to see in the point of context where this device falls into line. And we get a score of 5,250, which puts it actually at the uh, top of my low end device list, at least the devices I've looked at over the last year. It's certainly below what you'll see out of flagship phones, but uh, it's certainly good enough, I think, for most casual consumer use. And I think that is what the target market is, especially at its 50 or $60 price point. Uh, and it really does perform quite well for uh, what you you're getting here. So I'm quite pleased with uh, the overall performance here. I'm very pleased that the ads aren't all that intrusive. The battery life is also pretty good on it too. So if you're using the phone casually throughout the course of a workday, I think it will probably get you through that workday. It's when you uh, start doing a lot of applications and video watching and game playing, especially things like Pokemon Go, which really drain uh, batteries quickly, you'll see a, a far greater reduction in battery life. But I will give it an eight hour workday uh, under very casual kinds of use. But if you start playing a lot of games and you start uh, doing a lot of video playback, you'll see a reduction there. So I think if you're uh, just doing a, a movie or something, you'll probably get about four or five hours out of it during the day. Uh, less if you start playing games and other things that are going to tax the battery further. It's got a 2,500 milliamp hour battery, which is a little bit less than we've seen on some of the uh, higher end, larger phones, uh, but it's still good enough, I think, to get a casual user through their workday. So that is the Blue R1 HD. And if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber and have a compatible carrier, this is actually a very good phone for the money. I was surprised by, uh, first of all, how nice it feels. It doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels like a phone that should cost a little bit more than its 50 or $60 price price tag suggests, and normally it is a little bit more expensive, and even at $100, it feels uh, like a really nice phone. The ads are not all that intrusive on here, and I really like the fact that instead of just installing Amazon's version of Android, you get the Google version of Android with the Amazon apps alongside of it too. So you can get all your Google stuff installed on here. It's running uh, Android 6.0 Marshmallow, and they also give you all the Amazon stuff pre-installed when you get the phone set up. Now, normally this Amazon app store, which is of course available to other Android users also it takes a little bit of a couple steps to get installed and it, it's not hard but it's not something that a lot of consumers may find a simple process uh, this really is because you turn the phone on log into your Amazon account when you set it up and then you'll have uh, access to all of those free apps and really good for kids especially if they're looking for uh, games to play there's a lot of games on here that are free uh, with your prime account uh, that you may have to pay for on the Android app store so there is some uh, value here to be gained uh, for not a lot of money either so all in I have to say this is a really nice phone, definitely take a look at it if you are not looking for something fancy and don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, unlocked, works with any compatible carrier, and uh, 60 bucks and it's yours for life. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash S.